Okay, we go live stream, we do the recording, and off we go, sir. Hello, welcome, namaste, and good evening, good afternoon, all across the world, wherever you are. Thank you so much for this amazing opportunity to be a panelist, to be a part of change-making world. All of you, my panelists, thank you so much. With folded hands, I welcome each and every one of you. I'll be your host and moderator for the evening today. My name is Dawood Wade, and off we go here. So once again, for all the listeners, the participants across the world, thank you. We are live on Facebook. We are here and we hope to engage in a lot of meaningful conversations that we're going to do today. As with the culture and tradition, we start our session with a beautiful prayer and we will take it forward after our invocation. Namaste Sada Vatsale Matra Bhume Namaste Sada Vatsale Matra Bhume Tvaya Hindu Bhume Sukham Vardhitoham Tvaya Hindu Bhume Sukham Vardhitoham Mahamangale Punya Bhume Vadarthe Mahamangale Punya Bhume Vadarthe Patatve Shakayo Namaste Namaste Patatve Shakayo Namaste Namaste Prabho Shakti Man Hindu Rashtrang Bhuta Prabho Shakti Man Hindu Rashtrang Bhuta Ime Sadaran Tvam Namamo Vayam Ime Sadaran Tvam Namamo Vayam Tvadiya is so powerful that is so meaningful and i always have believed that your faith in god is as powerful your god is as powerful as your faith in him and what better time to you know invoke all the faith because today is the time when the world has shook a little virus has perhaps shaken the world but also brought us together thomas friedman in his book the world is flat says that indeed today we are living in no better and no flatter world than ever before I mean, you have panelists from across the globe, different time zones, timelines, demographics, and yet the best thing is I do not need visa to go across and meet all of you. So once again, on behalf of the amazing Charles Walser Society for Innovation Research, CWSIR, I welcome all of you. A society meant for innovation research founded in 2019 in Uttar Pradesh, India, and it has just been leading and growing. Who better to be the first addressee of the day than the journal secretary of CWSIR, Dr. Shruti Maragaha. Dr. Shruti, thank you so much and welcome to this August panel. 
Thank you, Mr. Wade. Thank you so much. Good evening, uh, everyone. Dr. Shruti, right. Uh, Dr. Shruti, thank you so much. And a quick question, you know, before you begin your session, how is the vision of CWSR globally so big? Where did you conceptualize? How did it start? A very good question and a question very meaningful that has a meaning in today's society. See, CWSIR has a very broad vision and the vision is not only on papers. We, have, we are meant to achieve it. We are meant to achieve it and I'm sure with the passage of these two days of Word uh, Summit, Word Youth Summit, everyone would have realized that we are achieving the vision. We are trying to focus our energy and channelize youth synergy, helping them, assisting them to realize their own potentials. So I am sure everyone over here would agree that we are working dedicatedly towards youth development, which is the future of our nation. Thank you so much, Dr. Shruti, and we can go ahead. Wonderful vision. Right. Thank you so much for giving me a chance to officially open the mark the program open. A very good evening to everyone, ladies and gentlemen. I'm glad to welcome you all on the third day of Ford Youth Summit, organized by Charles Walter Society for Innovation and Research under the supervision of Dr. Smita Tiwari, founder of CWSIR, unmatchable mentorship of Dr. Vishek Pandey, whose vision and mission have inspired masses around the world. Carrying forward the learning of two days of World Summit we accept the challenge of youth channelization. We accept the challenge, and that is a revolutionary step that would trigger a bent of scientific and research-based learning approach among youngsters. Conducive environment, positive de-learning, which is very important, and learning that would enable our youth to explore their own potential. Every young mind has potential. What is needed is to unlock that potential and no one else can do that. We can just motivate them and encourage them to unlock their own potential. Let's cater to our youth. Let's not delay that and let's understand them and try to assist our youth to unlock their own potential. So marking the, the, marking the program officially open, I request Mr. Wade to uh, take the program ahead with uh, great luck to everyone. Thank you so much, ma'am, and thank you for your opening remarks. We actually are really, you know, this is a joke I was dying to say that we are an August company in July itself, and I think what better than telling it now? How about taking you to one of the most beautiful, delightful place, perhaps everyone will be looking forward, Maldives, some of the most beautiful islands in the world, and it's an honor and privilege to welcome Dr. Abdullah Rashid, the Minister of State Education, Maldives. Sir, my first, just, you know, I just want to engage with everybody. I grew up in Andaman and Nicobar, some of the most beautiful part of India. Sir, how does it feel to grow up in an island the world envies? Uh, th thank you, uh, Mr. Dawood. Uh, it's a pleasure, it's a blessing uh, living uh, in a, a nation like Maldives. As, as you know, everyone in the world, uh, Maldives is the uh, dream destination. Then, of course, uh, where I am uh, uh, born and brought up here. So uh, I believe that it's a blessing uh, to be a Maldivian. Sir, I, I can see the pride the way we take as Indians. We, I see your pride the way you take as Maldivian. So the floor is yours. Please go ahead with your presentation, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, let me share my screen. I have a short presentation. Sure, sir. First of all, uh, uh, I can see very high level uh, uh, and really difficult to call the, by the names. So every, everyone together with all due respect, uh, I greet you all. Assalamu alaikum and very uh, good evening. Uh, I can see uh, uh, my friend, uh, Dr. Priyadashi Nayak and other high level uh, dignitaries. Uh, one, once again, uh, very, very good evening. I'm going to talk about need for revolutionary rebirth of formal and non-formal education channel. I can say a 
this is a very important topic because transforming educational opportunities are very important. It a need of revolutionary rebirth of formal and non-formal channel. Uh, I'm very happy to see uh, this uh, theme from this World uh, Youth Summit because uh, this should be the priority of the governments, policymakers, and educational leaders around the world. Revolutionary changes are required the way we provide education to youth and children. As we can see in other sectors, things have been changed a lot, whether it is medical uh, field, engineering field, uh, or transportation. Uh, we can see a lot of innovation and creativity. When we, when we compare uh, the development and revolutionary change uh, in educational sector, uh, we can't see that, many, that much uh, change when compared to other industries. So transformational changes are really required to empower and to develop our youth uh, to lead and uh, live in 21st century. When we are talking about this 21st century skills are very important. Uh, I really love the concept of 21st century skills. When we revolutionize uh, education for the youth and kids, we have to focus these 21st century skills. You can see the broad categories of foundational literacies. The way we define literacy in 20th century and the way we define in literacy in 21st century is different. In, before this century, literacy just means basic reading and writing. But in 21st century, literacy includes uh, scientific literacy, ICT literacy, financial literacy, cultural and civic literacy. And I believe that very soon space literacy will also will be at the list. Therefore, we need to provide uh, our youth and our children education in this context with these uh, specialization. And 21st century skills include competencies, which are very important for our youth uh, to be successful in this knowledge economy. So critical thinking and problem solving, creativity, communication, and collaboration are very important. Through traditional way of teaching, through traditional way of lecturing, it is impossible to be our young people creative and innovative entrepreneurs. Therefore, if we really want to bring, uh, make them or prepare them 21st century, as I said before, we have to change the way we teach, the way we lecture. And our young people should be inculcated with these qualities, curiosity, initiative, persistence, and adaptability. We are living in a turbulent world. Things are changing. Now we are experiencing COVID-19 and everything changed. So if our young people are adaptable, then they will not struggle. They will not suffer when things change. And leadership, of course, very important. Therefore, I request to change our teaching learning method by using the scientific method of teaching. When we use scientific method of teaching, the lesson should not start with just a topic or lesson one, two, three. The lesson should be started with a question. The lesson should be started with a question. Uh, then students will form hypotheses to answer the question. Then they will read whether they are textbook or other websites, or they will interview with the people, they will collect information, then they will uh, do the experiment to find the answer to these questions. Then they will analyze the data and they will see whether their answer is correct or their hypothesis is right. If their hypothesis is not right, again, they go back and they change their hypothesis. Again, they collect uh, data and they do the experiment. Once they, their hypothesis is right, they, then they will write the final report. This is how teaching learning should be. It, I believe in my perception, even higher education in universities, rather than teaching individual modules, we better give them projects, teach them scientifically, 
then they will it will be more meaningful because when we teach just lecture method rote learn uh, uh, memorizing without understanding traditional way of testing these these vague school uh, university graduates they are not really ready for the workforce i can say they are semi finished products that is why they are unable to apply what they learn and another model uh, or another revolution i suggest is engineering method of teaching uh, as you can see engineering method starts define a problem so students will be working and solving a problem not just seeking for the fact or knowledge so to define the problem after defining the problem they do, they do the background research they specify a requirement they brainstorm and evaluate to a solution then they develop a prototype if prototype is successful then they go for commercialization if prototype is not successful then again they have to specify they have to re revise their requirements uh, they have to change again they do the prototype to at last regarding non formal education uh, in my perception non formal education also should be provided with creativity and innovation and it should be flexible very much flexible and it should be easily accessible it should be relevant to the youth and it should facilitate for lifelong learning so that's all i want to share uh, with all the dignitaries i know and i can see very experienced educators uh, in this platform uh, I, i'm really excited to listen uh, their insights so i'm not going to take much time uh, thank you uh, everyone for giving me this opportunity uh, to say a few words in this world youth summit i wish everyone a very good day thank you thank you so much sir dr abdullah rashid the minister of education maldives amazing sir you just put the opening perspective so well and what better way to take it forward than my inviting major harsh kumar secretary ncert sir welcome sir and thank you so much for being on the panel सभी को नमस्कार माँ आपको भी माँ सरस्वती को प्रणाम करते हुए माँ भारती के चरणों में वंदना करते हुए मैं इस सभा में उपस्थित समस्त सुधीजन को प्रणाम करता हूँ अभिनंदन करता हूँ माननीय डॉक्टर अब्दुल्ला रशीद जी डॉक्टर प्रियदर्शी नायक जी शिव प्रसाद जी बी एम गांधी जी डॉक्टर धीरज मल्होत्रा जी डॉक्टर रवि त्रिपाठी जी डॉक्टर अभिषेक पांडे जी और अन्य उपस्थित सभी सुधी जनों को मेरा प्रणाम अ वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू एंड इट इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग यू नो डिस्कशन विच इज गोइंग ऑन एंड विच इज वेरी मच रिक्वायर्ड फॉर टूडेज यूथ टू अंडरस्टैंड द सिचुएशन लाइक सर हैज ऑलरेडी टोल्ड अबाउट यू नो द पोटेंशियल ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग and uh, you know what should be the way of teaching and what should be the youth be taught let me tell you uh, you know in our culture in uh, culture of the country uh, obviously now we uh, it is since time immemorial that we take vasudhaiv uh, kutumbakam that the entire world is you know our brothers and sister we are family so we teach uh, we take something from you we give something to you but uh, in the present scenario the situation which has arisen and which the youth must understand one very important thing and that is empathy in this time of testing you know it is not the government which has come it is the society which has come up with innovative ways and methods and the youth have to go back to the basics what sir was telling you know i could just visualize that what i have uh, you know undergone in my army training in my army days and in the practice what we used to do mansa vachana karmana what we think we should speak the same and we should act as per that only our action should coordinate with our thought process and how our thought process can be improved this is what we are being taught from the childhood like i i say every time that the aim of education is to become a good human being until and unless you are a good human being it is immaterial what you are doing 
you should stand with the people you have the uh, sense of humanity and that is what the essence is you know what we say ki hamare yahan char ved hain aur che shastra hain lekin unka sar kya hai dukh deen hai dukh hot hai aur sukh deen hai sukh hot hai that what you call you no know, you reap as you sow so in the foundational uh, learning a child and this is uh, you know what is the vision of our leadership that they have thought of this in in the new education policy the main uh, emphasis is being given on early childhood care and education that how a child should be taught in early years so that he make we make him ready to face the society and uh, you know we are going to discuss on these things before that i wanted to tell you that yesterday was a very auspicious occasion for ncrt in which the honorable prime minister he launched uh, this uh, you know vidya pravesh this is i'm showing vidya pravesh this was launched yesterday which ncrt has prepared in which this is uh, a module to teach a child for pre learning from 3 years till he goes to the class first so there there is a module which has been given and uh, in this i am connecting this how this can uh, con contribute to personal and professional development of young people right from the childhood when they come because the, in this testing time the child who is going to the school hey they have not gone physically to the school they are learning online they are missing missing the you know social gathering or the things which they adapt from uh, their classmates their teachers from face to face learning the online education what servers telling right now that all this problem solving skills critical thinking this all not on this can never come from books only this comes from the interaction and the practice so how we can teach that now like uh, i said initially that empathy now how that empathy has to be developed in young persons it is given in our it has been very, very well elucidated in the new education policy regarding the umbrella policy in which schools and universities they have to adopt smaller schools the villages and the areas nearby in which there are less privileged uh, children or young people who are there who have got uh, uh, less resources so we have to support them with resources and when in you know you, this is an art of giving when you learn the art of giving it not only gives you inner pleasure but it gives a chance to the underprivileged uh, students or the people to develop with you and until and unless everybody develops because we all are talking on the same point that how this can be how the goodness can be spread and and the first thing is goodness can be spread through education only until and unless the understanding level of each one of us is one uh, like like minded people are sitting here and i thank uh, dr priyadarshini nayak to uh, you know uh, continuously giving me chance to uh, uh, to present myself to present my views in the august uh, you know meetings in the seminars in the webinars where we can understand each other and where we can tell that what is the uh, you know the goodness which is being followed at one place so that it can spread everywhere so uh, Uh, in my opinion uh, the uh, personal and professional development of young people can be made through art of giving first thing and then you can train them you know on uh, maybe on it maybe on any aspect which one wants to teach and for that teacher training is very important on that aspect government has given lot of stress and in our uh, ncrt uh, we have got six regional institutes in which pre uh, teacher training is pre service teacher training is given in uh, now we are using massive uh, you know uh, this digital programs in this uh, online classes are being run 
online tests are being conducted innovative methods have been adopted and uh, not only for the students studying at our regional institutes but also massive online courses for all the youths and they can avail this facility because uh, that is available on the website and regular classes are being run online then uh, the other courses are also being run on online courses are being run it has to be disseminated uh, to the youth that these are the courses and they can involve themselves in all type of training which are available throughout uh, the world also now so many online courses are available uh, we can make small groups in which these youths can be guided for that uh, for the digital learning and the use of uh, gadgets and also to impart them to the uh, underprivileged children of their locality and now the government is very uh, yesterday also we were talking that how uh, you know we can reach to the farthest villages uh, government is very serious about that and uh, uh, you know lines are being laid to the farthest villages where internet uh, the the right now the shortcoming is that we don't have connectivity to those distant places but uh, we are sure that we'll overcome with that and in future we know that we are going for blended form of education so the youth have to uh, you know adapt themselves to the situation and that is uh, when you have to learn the new skills what we have seen in these two uh, years and i pray to god that we don't see such worst years in uh, in our in our life and in the times to come but then we have to be ready since we have seen the worst we have to be ready for this situation but nevertheless we have to understand the importance of basic things like environment you see how uh, you know along with this pandemic how uh, this um, environment is going the situation of environment is going from um, bad to worse in everyday news you see the rainfall which used to occur for uh, the entire year that has occurred in two days whether it is in china in europe in india so this thing has to be understood very clearly that has been given in sustainable uh, goals also but uh, we have to teach these things because youth is our future youth is the future of the world and they have to understand that first of all humanity has to exist on ground then only we can develop then only we can you know advance technologically then we only we can uh, learn the technology or other things but then first of all environment we have to understand about that we have to understand our surroundings why these so many clashes around the world you know and very in the spurts you see so many clashes why because the thought process is not one we have not been able to develop the empathy so we all the educationists talk about iq eq sq now but we have to pay emphasis on emotional portion on spiritual portion so that we can you know move ahead i i i i think uh, i have crossed my time i am crossing my time so with these words i end and i thank you again sir for giving me this opportunity and uh, it was uh, wonderful to hear and I, and it will be treat to hear other speakers also i with these words i close my address uh, jai hind jai bharat हरीश जी थैंक यू सो मच सर बचपन से एनसीआर टी किताबें पढ़ के आते हैं तो वेन टू हियर आई एम एस इफ यू नो विच एस सेलिब्रेटेड गुरु पूर्णिमा वीक बैक टू हियर यू वॉज सो लिबरेटिंग सर तो थैंक यू सो मच एक छोटा सा सवाल सर आपके लिए यू हैव बीन इन आर्मी अब आप एजुकेशन में हैं जस्ट कीपिंग टू इंग्लिश फॉर दर ऑडियंस सर द डिसिप्लिन दैट वी सीन हाउ इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द डिसिप्लिन इन एटीज चिल्ड्रेन सर एंड टूडेज चिल्ड्रेन सर हम ज्यादा अच्छे थे कि हमारे बच्चे ज्यादा अच्छे सर ये तो आपके सिखाने पे डिपेंड करता है ये तो एनवायरनमेंट पे डिपेंड करता है कि हाउ वी टीच देम एंड हाउ वी टीच देम विद द यू नो आर ट्रेडिशन और हमारे यहाँ देखिए छोटी छोटी चीजें हैं जिसको कि अगर आप देखेंगे कि जैसे आप छोटी सी चीज मैंने जैसे आपको बोली जो हमारे वेदों में लिखा है वसुदैव कुटुम्बकम दैट वी टेक द इंटायर वर्ल्ड एज आर फैमिली यू नो अभी मैंने आपसे जैसे बोला 
कि हमारे यहाँ चार वेद हैं और छह शास्त्र हैं लेकिन इनका सार यही है कि आप जैसा देंगे वैसा पाएंगे एंड इट इज फॉर ऑल द मेथड्स ऑफ प्रेइंग यू नो गॉड इज वन दैट एवरीबडी अंडरस्टैंड बट देन दैट आर्ट ऑफ गिविंग एंड टू अंडरस्टैंड द अदर पीपल इन देयर परस्पेक्टिव इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट you don't understand the other people in your perspective you understand in their perspective and then we can understand and then panch ungliyan barabar nahi hoti sir but then when they come together then only they make a fist and uh, discipline is inculcated from home you know how do we behave with our children and how do we teach them that is what they learn and you know one it is it is not that they learn in school school is one chapter of that book so i think discipline is very important without discipline we cannot achieve or attain anything in life that is very well, clear. and whatever you know educationist since you have said this i will say all these thing i have jotted down what abdullah sir was saying that whether it is critical thinking problem solving creativity commitment collaboration curiosity initiative in army we follow this every day in every operation you have to take initiative you have to be curious that what is going to happen you don't know what is there in ahead and you have to lead people then you have to understand your people like he was saying that you know you have question the way of method he was telling about teaching that question hypothesis hypothesis experiment data analysis that thing is done in spurt of time in, in in seconds you have to analyze the situation you have to know your men you have to know your task then only you can proceed further so that is Wonderful, along with the training you know and i think when you have added this i think that Uh, training of ncc training of scout training of nss training of all these things are very much required today and in today's environment it is uh, uh, it is uh, inescapable so the these all things should be done Sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. As they say, once an army man, always an army man. Know your men. I'll remember that, sir. Uh, with that note, I would really it was so wonderful to hear people. Let me invite our next speaker on the panel, uh, Dr. Bridge M. Gandhi, former advisor, Ministry of Science and Technology, sir. Thank you so much, and please welcome and look forward to hearing your address, sir. I always have some problem like that. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank uh, CWSIR for inviting me to be, uh, you know, talking to people. Uh, uh, I would like to share some, my, some uh, slides which I have prepared. Uh, if if you allow me, I can. Uh, yes, sir. Please go ahead, sir. The topic given to me is the contribution to personal and professional development of young people. Yeah, certainly, you know, uh, uh, I have been a technocrat, so uh, uh, I have been supporting programs uh, for uh, uh, development and, uh, you know, research and development. Uh, in, in fact, uh, uh, let me see if I can... So you can just go ahead, sir. You can uh, make it full screen. I'll help you with it. So you can click where there's eighty percent. Can you go down, please, sir? Yeah, just uh, just go down, sir. So keep going down further, sir. No, 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 sir. So just take your cursor. I'm, uh, I'm so sorry. And uh, you know, the, the, we had people who are working for us now uh, sitting. At I know, sir. Sir, sir, please call the millennials in your house. They are the ones who know technology in and out. So you can call your granddaughter. <laughs> So you press F5 F5 you can yeah. press F5 right. development we have already identified the five Cs which is competence confidence okay. uh, you can tell him to correct. press F5 slide to that uh, uh, Brit sir just press F5 on your uh, laptop sir and then the screen will be larger uh, on your on your keyboard sir just press F5 uh, as F five sir on top on top right on top sir. Okay. Done sir absolutely. Dilip sir thank you so much. In fact, uh, uh, 
broad consideration for our practicing uh, youth development, I would say, is a, a coordinated community level effort that ensures all youth uh, have the equal access to array of services, support, and opportunities they need. Interrelation of services, support, and opportunities is a must. Framework is founded on community-wide mobilization and involvement. And a youth servicing program may change lives of youth to ensure focused positive outcome inclusive, that includes inclusiveness, youth voice, longevity, community involvement, and cross-sector agency, institution, and program collaboration. See, uh, when we talk of the youth development, development of young people may not uh, may go beyond skill training or finding opportunities to work or job. Actual development should access how they use their skill in positive way in, to bring in change in self, uh, their colleagues, community, and the development of the country as a whole. When we talk uh, positive uh, youth development, it would look into strengthening the existing services and programs that expands opportunities, support, and resources from community to young people to develop their full potential, promoting uh, positive youth outcomes entails emphasis on positive outcomes, youth-wise strategies aims to uh, involve all youth, long-term involvement of youth, community involvement, and emphasis on collaboration. Uh, meeting the goals of uh, uh, youth development, there need to be a perspective changes that we would be expecting. There should be a change in attitude passion and positive attitude towards working and accepting the challenges towards positive thinking. Innovation. It should be focused state of the art experiment approach they are presenting. One has to question self, the rational behind suggested approach. What is the innovative part? I would say uniqueness should be the strength of the proposed itself. Opportunities. Opportunities, uh, there is a uh, you have to look in for continuous uh, search for the opportunities around the areas of expertise. National and state governments provide ample opportunities, support programs to develop skills in the youth. To me, uh, safety and security, you know, after the COVID-19 also becomes very important. Appropriately trained in handling hazardous materials may transform youth in development of clean and healthy environment safe from biologicals and chemicals. Uh, promoting intellect, uh, intellectual development in youth need to harness their skills in areas of expertise, assessment of their basic academic critical thinking and problem solving aspirations. They need to be involved in programs that provide opportunities to do research, tutorials, support, community projects, including systemic, systematic problem-solving components of, uh, to promote independence. Uh, we, we, we should uh, take uh, youth as facilitators of uh, value formation and development. Para uh, professionals are already engaged in the development process of changing lives and values of young co-workers with limited resources, support, and infrastructure. We need to explore further the potential of these professions as facilitators through education and training of value in formation within the larger frame of uh, youth development. Interna at international level, many agencies and experts have analyzed issues faced by the youth based on age, gender, and diversity of displaced youth, refugees, and internally displaced people. Policy, guidelines and strategies are already in place to develop institutional infrastructure and approaches to identify and respond to the needs of displaced youth and their current funding programs, monitoring and evaluation process. At national level, I'll say in India, the Department of Youth and Affairs and Supports under the Government Ministry of Youth Affairs and Supports functions largely as a facilitator of youth building. Uh, it's a uh, narrow Yuva Kendra integrates power of youth in, uh, princip on principles of volunteerism, self-help and community participation avenues towards nation building and develop their personality and skills. 
Uh, Rajiv Gandhi National Institute of uh, Youth Development offers academic programs at PG levels, R&D, and coordinates training program, including gender studies, development studies, local governance, social innovation, and entrepreneur and social sciences. Department also facilitates uh, international uh, interaction with the international agencies or organization of uh, joint events, participation in UN programs and international exchange of youth delegation to create international perspective towards uh, global development activities. <clears throat> See, science and technology, I've been in the science and technology department. Science and technology support system in India comes from central government and uh, SNT departments, independent research institutions, national laboratories under SNT department and DRD, central socioeconomic and other ministries, in house RD units, CROs, CMOs in private sector, state government, state SNT department, and NGOs. Funding for the uh, science and technology comes mainly from the Ministry of Science and Technology through its three department, Department of Science and Technology, Department of Scientific and Industry Research, and Department of Biotechnology. Department of Health Research also supports programs in health areas through Indian Council of Medical Research. There are other uh, in, uh, unit, uh, departments of the government which, like uh, uh, atomic energy, ocean development, environment and forest, uh, university grant commission or uh, information technology, they also support uh, R&D programs. Uh, for all those who do not know, uh, department uh, uh, science and technology minister, uh, ministry has three departments, department of science and technology, department of scientific and industry research, Department of Biotechnology. Department of Science and Technology basically involved with research in all aspects of science and technology has 20 autonomous institutions and two statutory board which provide funding. Department of Scientific and Industry Research, its autonomous body Council of Scientific and Industry Research has 43 laboratories supporting research in the areas of biological and non-biological sciences. Department of Biotechnology has uh, 16 autonomous institutions. It has a mandate uh, to uh, work on uh, product and process development. It has 16 autonomous institutions in specialized areas and three PSUs. Uh, one Biotechnology Industry Research Assistant Council, what we call as BIRAC, is a ma major conduit for uh, supporting programs uh, related to the industry. There are special services to the young scientists. It's the fast track research grants, rapid travel grants, small science meeting, career development awards, short and long-term fellowships in foreign labs, overseas training fellowships, associateship for specialized training in niche areas, and international research program. Also these ministries, uh, science and technology ministry follows uh, 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 provides a lot of uh, fellowship opportunities for young under them. Uh, Absolutely, sir. So there's a lot of questions. I, I think I'm getting on private message a bit, sir. So, so much of research that is going on. I wanted uh, to, you know, uh, sir, interject and just ask this question to you, if I'm allowed to, sir. Please. Uh, so, how do you develop a scientific temper in today's children? So, and, 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 and have you seen generations, sir? So, who were you, sir, as a student? Very mischievous, very obedient. Uh, so, can we have some honest answers from you? I can see my co-panelist smiling. It's, it's so curious. It's, it's basically the attitude. Are your, you know, uh, uh, trust to have intellectual. Uh, let me, once you have raised this question, I, let, let me give my own example. I That's worked it. in the Institute of Medical Sciences in the year 70s. There was nothing was available. No facilities was available. We were doing primitive technologies. Primitive technologies. We were doing primitive techniques, uh, you know, uh, to run off that. Uh, there, you know, uh, I had, I was lucky to have the opportunities to visit MIT and, you know, London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. I, I you know, I, I wanted to develop something for the country. So I developed 
hepatitis B surface antigen test at the cost of rupees 1 rupee and 45 against the rupees 45 we were paying against the uh, against 45 rupees uh, you know test from Abbott laboratories and you know uh, I further developed uh, you know brought the, down the cost to half and believe me every day we were running uh, about 100 to 200 uh, uh, samples and this technique was used in uh, AIMS to, uh, till 2005. So you can imagine in 20, 25 years, now how much money we saved by, you know, just manipulating and looking at what, you know, because we wanted to develop that, we developed those, and it's, it's not that. We, 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 we developed so many tests, so many tests, you know, for uh, antibody testing, all these, you know, dot assays, you know, what we call these days, you know, small, uh, quick, 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 uh, uh, you know, uh, assays test. We developed at that time. I, 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 it, my, my exposure to MIT uh, USA, I, I brought down the, you know, uh, uh, technology of lipoprotein quantification. We, we, in 1976, we did the lipoprotein quantification in the country. And, and that is in the end, you know. Thank so you so much, sir. You know, but but if, you, if you want to achieve something, it's possible. You have to change your attitude towards your body. There's so much of wealth of knowledge that you bring just from the travels that you've done. Brit, sir, thank you so much for sharing the amazing research that is happening. I think they always say you stand on the shoulders of the giants. So you all are the giants that the generation ahead is standing on, sir. So once again, sir, thank you so much. I, I would just take one second. You know. I, Please, I would, Please, sir. You know, I would, because of my last slide, if you if you allow me, I'll just, uh, can, can I go back to the slide? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please go ahead, sir. Just slide uh, share and you can go ahead. Just click on share screen, sir. Yes. Okay. A minute with Dr. Bridge and then we'll invite our next panelist, Dr. Shiv Prasad to join us. So please uh, go ahead. Sorry, I'm not able to bring it down. See, basically- so, so, so Just go next, sir. Just, just click on next. Enter, just click on enter, sir. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, this is uh, very important for me, you know. It's, it's the biosafety and biosecurity aspect is an important aspect of youth development. The dual use research in life sciences raises concern for biosafety and biosecurity as generated knowledge, information, products, or technologies could be misused to pose significant threat that has broad potential consequences to public health, safety, agriculture, animal, environment, material, and national security. So, government has already constituted number of uh, you know uh, competent authorities to oversee the biosafety aspect. I would say youth can play a major role in developing bioclean, what we call bioswitch environment by abiding to ethical principles and values of biosafety measures to protect against technologies having potential to be mis misused to threaten public health environment industry. Now here again, I'll just take a second to say, you know, if you go to a, a physician lab, a you know, a physician, he asks you to get your hemoglobin done. You give the sample to them. They test for hemoglobin and where, where that the other sample go? Does anybody know what was there in the sample? Was that infectious or not? They need to see that, that this, this is properly managed. There has to be risk management, you know. Right, uh, absolutely. So we have, we need, government has to look in for that. They have to increase oh. awareness of biosafety, biosafety education. Uh, training programs should be there. There should be effective monitoring system. And uh, there should be a, a training curriculum for bio-based bio management because you, th then only you can make it safe. They, they have to, at this stage itself, in lab itself, they have to consider all these things. 
Thank you, Arun, sir. Right. Giving me Thank you time. so much, sir. There's so much to learn from each one of you for the positive time. You know, that's a, the worst thing that the moderator has to do is, is intervene. But thank you so much for sharing such level of expertise at multiple levels, sir. Uh, what I'll do immediately is I'll invite my next speaker, Dr. Shiv Prasad M. Khaned, former director, Nehru Science Center, Maharashtra. Uh, thank you so much, sir. And Dr. Shiv Prasad, you know, sir, I grew up in Andamans. Every once in a year, we would come down to Mumbai, and our go-to place was the Nehru Science Center. I, 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 you know, one of the things I dream is my daughters also enjoy the same thing. So the floor is yours. Thank you so much for being on the panel. Um, thank you so much, uh, um, Mr. Dawood. You've been a wonderful uh, host, uh, introducing every speaker. Um, on the occasion of this uh, World Youth Summit, which is being organized by Charles uh, Walters Society for Innovation and Research. Uh, uh, it's a it's a great honor for me to be you know sharing the dice with uh, all the distinguished uh, guests both from India and abroad. Um, I think uh, the tone for the World Youth Summit for today's program was beautifully contextualized and put in uh, a place by uh, uh, the Honorable Minister Mr. Abdul Rasid, Minister of State for Education Maldives. You know, he talked about uh, the the concept of scientific. Uh, um, teaching and analytical thinking in terms of engineering, the putting, uh, putting to use this, uh, the concepts of science and technology for uh, no formal and non-formal education. Uh, and, and of course, uh, Dr. Bij Mohan Gandhiji has uh, actually elaborated in detail the kind of opportunities that exist for uh, science and technology research in India, I mean, across the board, cutting across from, you know, DBT to DST and all these things. What I will be speaking is, you know, this is the millennial. You, I think, use the word millennial. Those people who are all born, I think, all, most of the youths are now, you know, a millennial or maybe oh, three, four years uh, born before uh, the uh, the dawn of this century. Uh, one thing that I wanted to talk to oh, these myth, uh, youths is that uh, we are now living in what is called as a knowledge society, which people talked about. Um, this is an age where uh, knowledge matters. Uh, it's also an age where perhaps, you know, most of the people should grow up as uh, uh, job providers rather than job seekers. You know, when, when you are empowered with knowledge, you can apply this knowledge to entrepreneurial use where uh, instead of you seeking for the job, perhaps you can actually create hundreds and thousands of jobs. In order to be successful in this, more so when, you know, the Charles Water Society, when I mean, you, you specialize in research and innovation, uh, talking about science, technology, research, and innovation, we must prepare our uh, youth also for failures. Now, unfortunately, what happens is, you know, we always tend to eulogize uh, um, successes. We hardly ever talk about uh, the failures. Failures are an integral part of any science, technology, or any success. So what I will be doing is, I will be talking about some of the failures that the greatest of people the greatest of scientists, the greatest of technologists have uh, faced in their life so that these people become an inspiration to our youth. And so these youth are not afraid of any failure. Most of the times in the modern world, what we tell is we tell our students, we have tell our youth to think out of the box. What do you mean by thinking out of the box? Thinking out of the box means you are basically trying, you are asked to tread a path which is less treaded. That means you've got to find your own ways, some, some new ways. When you're trying to explore new ways, there is a possibility for failure. Now, speaking about failure, let me talk to you. Let me um, remind our youth that uh, uh, Lord Kelvin, you know, the greatest of, uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, we now measure one of the, the temperatures by Kelvin. You know, Lord Kelvin, he was the, the president of the Royal Society. In the year 1895, he said, any machine heavier than air cannot fly in i'm talking about 1895 he was the president of the royal society he made this statement this statement was followed by another gentleman by name uh, dr newcomb uh, who also actually ridiculed langless langless achievement of uh, space flight then what happens in just eight years from 1895 when uh, lord kelvin made this statement that heavier than air objects cannot fly here comes two youth the Wright brothers, who were actually working in a cycle factory, cycle mechanic, they were basically mechanic. They adopted the methods which the Honorable Minister Abdul Rashid Ji talked about, the scientific methods of observation, experimentation, forming an hypothesis, and then they come out in just eight years from the monumental statement 
a blunder statement that uh, Lord Kelvin made in eight years, they succeed. And then we have in 1903, the, uh, the Wright brothers flew for 57 seconds. Initially, of course, in the fifth or sixth attempt, then the rest is history. Where are we now? From that 1903 powered flight, where are we? Think about this. It all started from one Lord Kelvin. So when Lord Kelvin could go wrong, and he was proved wrong by none other than not formally, so formally educated uh, uh, two youths, the, uh, the Wright brothers. So this is an opportunity in this world of uh, knowledge society, which we are also calling it as, uh, uh, you know, we also call it as a fourth industrial revolution. This is a lesson for us. Similarly, I would also like to talk about a couple of other, uh, you know, in, particularly in India, uh, most of the youth and also the children are very fond of our uh, former president, Dr. Abdul Kalam. Everyone talks about he's got as a missile man. I mean, he was working in ISRO. So let me talk to, uh, let me tell my uh, youth friends uh, that uh, how did, and how many times did uh, Dr. Abdul Kalam fail? You know, Dr. Abdul Kalam was born in uh, Rameshwaram. He used to uh, move around the beaches and look at the, the birds and always he dreamt of uh, uh, taking up a career uh, in the aviation. He did succeed, but what happened is after completing his engineering, he went for an interview for uh, Air Force, Indian Air Force, but then he could, he did not succeed there. He stood ninth according to his own statement. And I think eight people got into the Indian Air Force, whereas he could not, he failed there. Subsequently, you know, he joined uh, DRDO. He did a beautiful design to create a hovercraft, but that hovercraft never came into um, the practicality. There again, kind of a failure. Subsequently, he joined uh, Indian Space Research Organization based on the request of uh, the Vikram Sarabhai, the, the founder of uh, ISRO and MGK Menon. Here comes the turning point in, in the career of uh, Abdul Kalam. His first attempt, he was the project director for a um, space launch vehicle, which is to be called as SLV. In 1979, when he was a project director, he tried to launch that, it failed. It went into the sea. Instead of going to space, it went into the, the sea. That's again a failure. But then he had mentor in the form of Professor Satish Savan, who said, don't worry, I mean, you failed. But there were, in fact, a lot of critics who were criticizing India that, you know, you don't have money to feed your people. That was the time when we were living from what is called as a ship to mouth existence. Professor Bridgemoon uh, Gandhiji will understand that, you know, we had to wait for uh, shiploads of uh, uh, the rice to, or uh, the wheat to come from US to feed our people. But then where are we? We are here in this stage primarily because of science, technology and research. But when we are talking about science, technology and research, there will be a possibility of failures and this failure, we should not be afraid of failures. And formal academy, in fact, uh, most of the industry people have, uh, the, the leaders or the captains of industry have been telling to the people that uh, the youths who are coming out, they are non-employable. Even if he, he could be a graduate engineer coming from the best of the colleges, but then they are not non-employable. Primary reason why they are non-employable is like I think it was, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, Dr. Rashidji talked about, uh, Abdul, Abdul Rashidji talked about rote learning. You know, these people end up rote learning. They don't practice what is called as a scientific or technological method of learning. That's when they are not, they're completely afraid to take any risk. When you do a, when you perform an experiment, when you do any scientific or technological innovations, there is bound to be failure. There are many people who have failed. So, I, so these are some of the things. Then I will also give you, because we, we have less time, I will talk about one famous book that's called as a Brilliant Blunders. You know, normally the blunders and brilliant, it's kind of an oxymoron, it's an antonym. But then when such great scientists make blunders, it was called as a Brilliant Blunder by the author of the book uh, by Mr. Levio. What he says is he talks about five scientists who made the greatest of blunders. Who are those scientists? One of the scientists who made that blunder by introducing what is known as a cosmological constant was Einstein himself. The Einstein and making a blunder. Can we ever imagine that? He did so in his general theory, I mean, in general theory of relativity. So when Einstein can make a blunder, can make it, can commit a mistake, why should we be afraid of failures? After all, we are a lesser model when in comparison with, uh, 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 with Einstein. Similarly, Darwin, Charles Darwin, we all know that uh, on the origin of species by natural selection was written by Charles Darwin. So evolution and Darwin are directly interrelated. But then he himself made a blunder. He talked about uh, uh, what is called as a blended inheritance. He was not aware of uh, what is happening in the, in, the, in the stage of genetics. Gregor, he never knew about what Gregor Mendel was doing parallel. 
so he talked about uh, um, what is called as a blended genetics blended inheritance that means if i have a black and a white uh, uh, genes and then when they cross what we get is only the uh, the the gray that means black is completely out when i cross uh, two things the black one generation is completely out so this is the kind of a blunder that uh, charles darwin did uh, same is the case with another great man who earned actually i think perhaps the only man who has got two nobel prizes linus pauling two individual nobel prizes linus pauling got a nobel prize in chemistry single handedly linus pauling also got a prize in peace what did he do he you know he took almost about 13 years for publishing his alpha hel i mean triple helix um, uh, model in in publication but then he was also working for finding out the structure of dna he wrongfully conceived that the structure of dna could be a triple helix and then he so you know the reason i am trying to tell you this thing in this world of what we call as a um, disruptive innovation you got to take experiment you got to use this thing take the examples of people who are not formally educated out of school uh, out of college uh, people like microsoft bill gates he was a uh, college dropout what about uh, the apple founder steve jobs a college dropout but they all took chances they all failed perhaps n number of times but finally succeeded this so with this message what i would like to tell and also you know you also get what is called as an opportunities i will only take i don't know how much time i have i'll take only one more minute one minute to tell you about an opportunity that one of the greatest scientists of india got that was chandrashekar venkatraman c v raman got the nobel prize in 1930 for physics but what what was he he was nothing but an assistant accountant general he was working for the british government in the financial department he was posted in calcutta when he was traveling to his office in calcutta by the by the tram he just saw one board the name of the board was indian association for cultivation of science no that just that board actually motivated the scientist hidden in raman to become a scientist that was such a lab that you know there was hardly anything rigmon gandhi ji talked about low cost material low cost equipment that they have used or for maybe um, similarly raman used a low cost instrument to win the nobel prize and talk about what is known as a raman effect until that time you know we we only knew about layres um, lord uh, rayle why the sky is blue but why the ocean is blue he talked about that and got the nobel prize lovely why? sir thank primary. you <laughs> yeah it was only because of the the board that he saw so in this modern youth for all the modern youths you have wonderful opportunities you also have a beautiful government is science and technology infrastructure please take these opportunities as you lead towards the fourth industrial revolution don't be afraid of failures experiment and with maybe help from the charles waters research and innovation society and several others i'm sure you will be able to make name not only for yourself you will be successful not only for yourself but also to the nation and to the humanity um, in general thank you so much for uh, giving me an opportunity i am ready to take questions if there is any later on well, absolutely and a big round of applause dr shiv prasad i'm so amazed the way today's children rattle off say a barcelona or manchester united uh, lineup the way i could see your passion from paulus learning mendel darwin dr kalam c raman so this is the passion i'm looking at i have a question for you sir and uh, so you spoke about blunders a lot of blunders and you spoke about others blunder so besides getting married what is the biggest blunder of your life you know, <laughs> okay since you talked about this blunder well i was my passion was to join the indian armed forces we had a major unfortunately what i had is a, what is called as a heart murmur because i come from a sainik school but i could not succeed there that was my failure not in my hand but then i joined the 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 science communication non formal science communication and i am very passionate about it i love science communication uh, the greatest uh, the um, satisfaction is when we are able to talk to the students and out of those hundreds and thousands of people there are four or five who passionately pursue science as a career that is the greatest gift to us wow sir i i i love the articulation i love the clarity of thoughts and i wish sir you were my science teacher trust me I, it's it's amazing sir the way you presented thank you so much with folded hands dr shiv prasad here for everybody and i think you know you're free to put questions in the chat boxes let me now you know take the honor to introduce yet another illustrious panelist here dr priyadarshini nayak founder global training institute gtef uh, global education and training institute thank you so much sir and welcome my sincere regards uh, to the entire cwsr a team who has uh, very rightly and right time after the 
uh, one year celebration of national education policy launching by honorable prime minister yesterday and absolutely that summit was also that a policy after completion was also meant for the youth i must congratulate uh, cwsr for organizing uh, this world youth summit and uh, i can say i'm so proud to hear uh, the eminent speakers like you know uh, shri prasad ji was uh, really wonderful you know when i talk to uh, anybody you know i am in the field of education i'm a school leader uh, of course i'm uh, leading or dealing with a lot of youth in the days so uh, a personal and professional development what uh, major harsh kumar said or dr abdullah rashid the education minister has said very rightly said and they were into the field of education i would also talk about the areas where school educators or the youth those who are turning up those who are coming uh, into the field of education that matters that i'll be speaking to all of you professional and personal development is something through which the organization and individual engage in the process of learning to meet lot of challenges and to meet the desire goal friends becoming the first version of yourself is my first point what it means we need to develop talents and potential build human capital and facilitate employability into it what i mean to say that the becoming the best version for yourself this is my first point of personal development let go of limiting beliefs we need to amplify our strengths you know, every person develop growth mindset every need everyone need to throw out expectations by willing to shed your old identity we need to find out our work so we need all individuals it may be a teacher an educator a youth you need to prioritize your outcomes if at all you prioritize your outcomes i believe everything can be possible you know in your faith create empowering rituals have compassion for yourself this is something which i mean to say that you need to become the best version of yourself the second thing which i want to say is developing an open mindset as opposed to a closed mind all educators my message to all of you those with a open mindset seek after truth even if it means changing their mind those with a closed mindset seek to be right so those with open mindset have a genuine fear of missing important information okay and are thus hungry to learn and seek others perspective those with a closed mindset have no desire to learn or seek others perspective so those with open mindset are able to be very objective about themselves and their knowledge and admit what they do not know so those with a closed minds are always emotionally attached to their knowledge and have a hard time disconnecting from themselves even if everyone might be knowing about stephen covey seven habits of successful people we all need to know and i want every youth should be be you know they need to be proactive you know they are there are seven habits of uh, stephen covey and everyone i believe Uh, every youth must have every youth educator must have one is be proactive the second one begin with the end in mind that should be in the mind put first things first if that is been done i think you will achieve your goal think always win win never think you know, okay i may not be able to do it always you think win win seek first to understand then to be understood if that is the you know this is what uh, you know stephen covey's uh, seven successful uh, stories you need to synergize you need to sharpen the saw so these are the seven thing which uh, i think uh, very rightly uh, you know a personal development is required when we talk about stephen covey's uh, habits let me go for the next one this which i believe is better time management everyone knows every educator every leader set your goals correctly prioritize wisely set a time limit to complete your task it may be the school leader it may be an educated it may be a teacher if at all you can organize yourself you will have your personal development remove all non essential tasks or activities which is could be there you need to plan out you need to prioritize you have to plan out your work so if that is been done i think this is the best way 
where uh, you can plan out, uh, appreciate the value of time. The next one, which I need to say that is the pursuit of excellence. The pursuit of excellence is an unending pursuit. Our goal is to exceed our client's expectations or our parents' expectations and our own also. And set the bar higher and do it all again. Friends, we always want to strive for excellence. The pursuit of excellence means we are always looking for better ways to perfect our work and its outcome. So this is what I believe a youth personal development must be. There. And the last one for the personal development is anticipating future opportunities, anticipating a future needs. You know, forecasting is used to access the past trends. So this is uh, what I mean, the professional development. I'll start with personal development, which an educator must have is, uh, you know, to have a, a foresight behind it. When you have a foresight, evaluate, anticipate future opportunities, I think you need to, uh, you will develop a perfect plan for your future. That is professional development. When you talk about, uh, you know, the next one can be being creative. As more and more activities get automated, humans need to be more creative. Human needs to be more innovative and humans need to be empathetic. This is my thinking, if at all you want to, if every youth want to develop professional. Empathy begins with attention. I always say creativity does, does uh, it also creativity does. Too. In both the cases, you pay attention to everything. You know, your creativity, your innovative, innovative things will certainly play and improve your professional development. Opportunities, the next one. Uh, what are the, you know, in professional development, we have a lot of roles. It may be in the field of cybersecurity or in cyber city. There are types of roles you need to uh, specialize onto it. My last and foremost thing is the artificial intelligence professional development. Every professional uh, teacher, educator, now work team, then should know about the working of artificial intelligence. The importance of artificial intelligence and machine learning has been increasing, or you can say as a growing number, every company are now coming up with technologies. So we educators also need to understand, we need already, we all educators are now converted to a transformed educator with the techno savvy matters. So these products also is going to uh, give us, you know, different business, business modules and enhance the decision-making process. Why artificial intelligence and machine learning? Because it is going to enhance the decision-making process. So friends, uh, with, uh, with uh, more than a narrow specialist, I believe professionally, if you want to grow, then you need to follow all these points. And I think, uh, so keep learning a range of variety of things which you need to continue to learn and learn and relearn for the future aspect. My message to all the group, uh, all the youth teachers, educators all around that school educators, school leaders must grow professionally and personally, hand to hand to pursue things. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Thank you so much, Dr. Priya Darshini. Such an enlightening, so crisp and precise. And sir, as always, we've created a tradition. A quick question to you, sir. You know, so many things that you mentioned about if there was one subject we could introduce in the schools today and you could do that, which one would be, sir? Very precise, as always. What would be that? Be, sir? You know, uh, everywhere, everything is happening. But, you know, now as this is a technology world or digital learning is happening, digital education is happening. If at all given a chance, I would love to have an AI lab in my school. Artificial intelligence, I believe it is something fantastic is happening. And every teacher, every learner need to know it. And I think Dr. Dhiraj is over here. He will agree with this. And he is a techno man. And I believe, you know, in these days, when technology, everyone is adopting, everyone is doing it. So now there is no way when you go with blended learning and all. So I want, if these labs are set up in schools, not only in my school, in all over India, I think children will be the future citizens of this. Oh, entire Wonderful, history. sir. Wonderful. So, so much of transparency, so much of thought that went into what you said. Thank you so much with folded hand. That was Dr. Priya Darshini. Wonderful. My regards. Now, let's hop continents now and time zones and somebody who's been almost so awake, you know, as we are almost coming to the end of dawn and dusk here, Dr. Ejaz Qureshi, all the way from Canada, President Dream TV. Sir, welcome so much to this panel and thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Daud, uh, and uh, respected uh, speakers. Uh, it's an honor and privilege to be speaking beside uh, all learned people here. 
Thank you so much, CWSIR, for giving me the opportunity to speak on uh, the Youth World Summit 2021. I really appreciate it. Uh, my topic uh, of the day is advocating young people's needs past COVID-19. We all are going through difficult times and uh, we all have um, seen uh, the, uh, the, the bad and the worst of the COVID-19. But again, what is uh, the plan to go forward? Or what are the needs that youth specifically and um, uh, the, uh, the this entire subcontinent, India and Pakistan, has uh, uh, most of the youth between uh, 18 to 25 years old. And uh, we need to really uh, see what they need post COVID-19. Um, the impact, we all know the impact of uh, COVID-19 on young people and uh, other vulnerable groups have been really drastic. And uh, people have faced uh, uh, and shared their concerns about mental health, that's number one, actually, because everybody is mentally, so mentally upset. Some people have lost their loved ones. Uh, uh, some people have um, uh, their, their uh, loved ones in uh, uh, this uh, COVID-19 situation that they are either suffering or recovering or what have you. And uh, um, some people have lost actually the employment uh, some people have um, uh, lost their disposable income that they were making from uh, uh, different ways. And uh, uh, the, uh, the foremost thing that has been impacted was the education, actually. The education was disrupted because not all the institutions were um, internet ready. So they had to adopt quickly in order to um, cope with the COVID-19 situation. Um, the impact on uh, the young people have uh, uh, various uh, factors and aspects, and uh, our youth need to uh, uh, need to have proper health conditions and health facilities. They are looking for safety after uh, post COVID nineteen uh, because um, uh, because of uh, these stereotypes and things like that. If somebody had gone through COVID-19, the society um, has difficulty accepting and moving with that person, unfortunately. Uh, although that person has recovered from that uh, disease, but is still uh, that person, according to my experience and uh, uh, the people who I talked to, uh, said that they have difficulty merging back into the, uh, into the society. Uh, employment issues will be there. Um, again, uh, health, healthy environment should be provided to them. Education should uh, uh, continue to be at the same level as uh, pre-COVID-19. Um, food security and uh, good nutrition is, is a must to have because lots of things uh, uh, have been impacted. Uh, the productions and uh, um, for, uh, the uh, the crop has been impacted uh, because of uh, uh, the, um, the COVID-19 and uh, participation and inclusion is a must. Again, I would re-emphasize this, the participation and inclusion of everyone, regardless of uh, their COVID, uh, uh, they had COVID or not, that's a must. And then again, peace and security. This is really important because we see that lots of uh, um, uh, uh, lots of uh, things are not going the right way, the way they should have been gone. Uh, now the government is supporting um, and, and uh, they're responding back to build back a better, uh, a better country for everyone to, to live and, uh, uh, and survive. And uh, they are delivering uh, to all uh, the generations, but specifically the governments are working towards uh, facilitating the young people. And uh, um, we should have trust, all the youth should have trust in governments and uh, their responses to the pandemic. That is really, really important. Uh, youth uh, uh, is, is a catalyst I consider to, um, to be inclusive and resilient uh, uh, for societies. It's very important. And uh, youth organizations, uh, there are tons of youth organizations in, uh, in India and, and Pakistan that they are playing their role in uh, mitigating and uh, disrupting uh, the crisis and dealing with the crisis. Um, right. Thank you so much. Uh, engaging uh, youth uh, 
uh, is very, very important uh, to, to, to my knowledge. And uh, we have to uh, really include all the, all the youth and uh, uh, their participation. Uh, we have to build uh, their trust. We have to, do, we have, to have a long-term commitment with them. And uh, uh, no uh, non-young people should be left behind. So thank you so much for giving me time. Wonderful. And thank you so much, sir. A round of applause for Dr. Ajaz. You can use your emoticons. We are talking about youth. So let's feel a little young and let's use a lot of emotions out there. Dr. Ajaz, very quickly, you spoke about the youth. You are founder of Dream TV. 2050, sir, what do you see the youth contributing to the world? Uh, 2050. I'm, I'm not sure if I will be there or not, but... Uh, <laughs> God bless you with long life and good health, sir. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I see the, uh, the youth of uh, the subcontinent and taking a leading role into, into everywhere, into, into science and technology, into politics, into, uh, into business and marketing, into education and everything. And uh, I see that they will do a lot better than what we did and uh, our past generations did. Why? Because they have access to um, every information and uh, every single detail that is related to uh, these fields. So thank you so much. Wonderful. And thank you so much, sir. So I mean, the future is bright and hopeful, as Dr. Ajaz says. Absolutely. I wish the same. And thank you, sir. Thank you so much. You. Let's again go uh, island hopping as we go to our next speaker all the way from Philippines, uh, Donisa Arbas, ma'am, co-founder Nexa Dose. Thank you so much. One of the first panelists to come in. Cheerful and welcome, ma'am. So glad to have you here. Right, Donisa, ma'am. Please, you can unmute yourself and we can speak up. Thanks, Dr. Dawood, for the very warm welcome. You're welcome, ma'am. It is not a searcher for consensus, but a molder of consensus. Distinguished guests, fellow speakers, organizers, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. These powerful words by Martin Luther the King reminds me of a young girl from Dumaguete City, Philippines, who experienced bullying and rejection from her classmates and friends since elementary until university years. Not because she was physically weak or intellectually challenged, but because of her refusal to follow bandwagon, apathy, and egocentrism. Despite the financial challenges she faced back then, she's one proof socioeconomic status is not a hindrance to dream, inspire, and influence. Currently based in Dubai, working as a governess, educator, parenting coach, and a co-founder of Nexodos, which is an online platform for contribution and learning, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to one great leader, Dr. Abhishek Pandey, founder and president of WSIR, whose vision to empower the youth has provided us the opportunity to speak from our own experience, the importance of making a difference on a greater scale. Why are we placing the young people at the center of COVID recovery? One reason being young people are three times as likely as adults over 25 to be unemployed. Nearly 19 months since COVID upturned the global economic trajectory, countries are gradually progressing towards recovery and companies are restructuring their organizational systems. With this, the young people may find themselves unprepared for the new order and the changing economy. For this reason, we, the older generation, are faced with a challenge better equip the youth in their professional and personal dimension so they will have the capacity and ability to provide bespoke sustainable solutions addressing the need of the current time as well as the generation to come. Let me give you my humble opinion on how we can work on that in a nutshell. Just remember these four points, reskill, renew, responsibility, and relevance. Let's talk about the first point, reskill. In a survey conducted by the McKinsey Global Institute in 2017, an estimated 14% of the global workforce will need to be reskilled entirely, while 40% would require partial reskilling to continue in the current occupations, and 70% in the executive levels. The Institute identified four key skills 
which are critical for these workers in the COVID-19 recovery. First, the ability to operate in a fully digital environment. Second, cultivating cognitive skills for redesign and innovation. Third, reinforcing social and emotional skills for greater collaboration, management, and self-expression. And fourth, cultivating resilience and adaptiveness to be able to endure expected COVID-19 aftershocks. On a similar vein, the youth need to develop both technical and soft skills, be it in a formal or non-formal setting. It is high time that policymakers and curriculum developers update school curricula, better prepare the young generation for future work. The youth who are listening to this speech, it's time that you start asking these questions to yourselves. Do I have the skills that match with the demand in the market? Have I strengthened my social skills? Do I have the emotional intelligence and agility to handle various crises? What preparations have I done to face the post-COVID world? The second point, renew. Fine-tuning our internal monologue is vital in shaping our lives. We have heard of the difference between a fixed mindset and a growth mindset, a victim mentality and a victor mentality. All of us face giants and storms in various forms, but how we deal with them and what we have become out of them reflect the kind of mindset that we hold. I grew up hearing people telling me I was different, that I was nothing, that I'm not good, that I don't belong. I remembered when I was in university, my classmates would not invite me during lunch break, either because I didn't have the money to treat them, or I didn't wear fashionable clothes that would please them. However, I did not allow my unpleasant circumstance to define me. I am who I am because God loves me and he has blessed me with things even beyond my naked eyes can see. There is more to life than this. These were the words I would always tell myself. For the benefit of those who are not familiar with the difference between a fixed mindset and a growth mindset, the former believes that your qualities are carved on stone and it creates an urgency to prove yourself over and over. If you have only a certain amount of intelligence, a certain personality, a certain moral character, well, then you'd better prove that you have a healthy dose of them. It simply wouldn't do to look or feel deficient in, the, in these most basic characteristics. However, the growth mindset is based on the belief that your basic qualities are things you can cultivate through your efforts. Although people may differ in every which way, in their initial talents and aptitudes, interests or temperaments, everyone can change and grow through application and experience. The third point, responsibility. Leadership is about taking responsibility. Leadership and responsibility are two big concepts, but I would like to highlight this one in the context of leading oneself and taking responsibility of one's own growth and happiness. To the young people who are listening to me live or to those who will watch this recording, I would like to emphasize that you are the co-creator of who you want to be and where you want to be in life. Do not wait what the government can do for you, nor wait for the circumstance to get better because life is not perfect and never will. Do not wait for anyone to tell you to rise and walk. Be your own cheerleader and fan. If you want to impact lives, start from yourself and let the others see you transform. The world is your audience and it is looking for fruits, for results, and not mere words. Yesterday, Mr. Edward Gonzalez from NASA pointed out that your network is your net worth. Start evaluating what kind of connection you have. Ms. Yolanda Peterson from South Africa mentioned about goal setting and visualizing. In case you haven't done this, then start. Time is of the essence. Become a responsible leader 
you first need to evaluate the types of questions you're asking yourself regarding your daily life. If you can identify habits and thought processes that serve as barriers to responsible leadership, you stand a good chance of being able to make a positive change. The fourth point, relevance. As we continue to inspire the youth to thrive in their chosen field of expertise and not only survive, I would like to remind the young generation of Denzel Washington's words of wisdom. Don't just aspire to make a living, aspire to make a difference. You are the future doctors, entrepreneurs, educators, lawyers, nurses, IT experts, and so on, future engineers. You are there for a purpose. But besides fulfilling that purpose, aspire to be a person of great value that your absence will be felt because of how you have touched people's lives. You've influenced them to become better individuals. Above all, you are the future fathers and mothers of the next generation. You hold in your hand the power to nurture a generation into excellence in every aspect of their lives through your example. Uh, so, Arbaz, ma'am, can I intervene and just ask you a question? I'm, yeah. I'm so glad uh, you finish spoke about relevance. You want to finish up? Please go ahead. Please I'm go ahead. Appeals because I'm almost done. Yes, yes, yes. Leadership starts at home, in your family, and we know that family is the basic unit of society. As we pass the baton of legacy to you, may you continue the run to run the race of life with so much fire, determination, and perseverance to live in the very lives which we, the older generation, can be proud to witness, and one in which your children and your children's children will be proud to witness. Thank you so much and, and absolutely, you know, this is the toughest job of being a moderator where there's so much inspiring speech. Uh, you know, Arbas, ma'am, you started with Martin Luther King and I almost felt that I'm listening to another one in the making. So thank you so much for the wise words of wisdom and the and amazing analogy of leaders in a community. I think, I think CWSR is very biased towards islands because we started with Maldives, we write in Philippines, and now I'll get my another guest from Sri Lanka. I think what a privilege to have since island nations come in and speak to us. Can I invite Dr. Femida Mohammed, an entrepreneur all the way from Sri Lanka, one of the nicest people, despite losing to them the, the ODI series, I still feel one of the best people in the world and the most politest are Sri Lankans. Welcome and thank you so much for being here, ma'am. Hello, thank you so much for that. Do pardon my very dark background. Uh, I'm unable to do anything about it on my way from another meeting. So I'm very sorry. And at the same time, thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity. I feel honored to be amidst eminent speakers, luminaries and dignitaries who have placed forth such illuminating thoughts. It was indeed a pleasure and it was quite enlightening to myself as how I need to be perceiving the development of youth. And I completely agree with how uh, the last speaker, uh, Ms. Donessa, ended. Leadership begins at home, and thus my topic, advocating the needs of youth post, in a post-COVID-19 world. Absolutely, as many people or many speakers, many panelists have clearly stated, skills, competencies have started playing a pivotal role in the development of the youth and what do youth stand for who do youth represent the youth represent the nature the the nation and they would be the future leaders who would be taking up lead roles and would be leading this entire nation in time to come and they need to be nurtured in the right way i believe that if we are able to lead them with excellence they would be able to lead the nation with excellence. So, however, as uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Donessa said, the renewing, the reskilling, the relevance, all begins at home. And I believe that there is a particular model that plays a vital role in helping youth developing themselves. 
Because when you see, you are the fruits that bear from home. And leadership, learning begins from home once again. So when we look into this how and the why factor, when the what has been already figured, the how is how we help them perceive the world, how we help them perceive themselves, how we help them perceive others. The bigger model comes into play. The bigger being, we need to help youth understand belongingness of themselves, belongingness of tasks, belongingness, belongingness of their lives, belongingness of jobs and all responsibilities. I provide them with the right kind of independence while guiding and supporting them. The G is to help them being generous. That is something that has come up very important, has placed a paramount importance post COVID. And another G being the growth oriented perception that we need to instill in them. And E is to be empowered and help them empower others. And finally, the R, responsibility. So how to take accountability of oneself, how to take accountability as a leader for their own team. Thus, the bigger model, to lead and perceive the world in a bigger way. When you look at youth, they become these fruits, the seeds that is being sowed in the hands of parents, teachers, families, friends. And the way we nurture them is what they grow into. They are being, they kind of tend to um, live around the cultures, the traditions, the beliefs, the values that we instill in them. It is us who are at the giving point and youth are, have always been at the receiving point. What we give, they take, they learn, and they start following our path. For example, a mother and a leader are leaders in their own terms, where they inspire children. And that is where they draw their inspiration. They draw their values. They draw their life models. Hence, it is important for us to teach children of basic, beginning from basic human values to important life competencies and skills. The term unemployment has been lingering around the world for a very long time. And why does unemployment occur? It is because competencies and skills that are being sought after in every job are not available. Every human being is born with a purpose and their purpose is to add a significant value in their own unique way. If everybody is able to do the same thing, it's called replication. And through the theories, through the exams, through the grades that we've been defined for many centuries ago, still a few years back, nothing but the same thing has been taught to us. And we go with filled with theories, filled with good grades. And when we enter into the real world, we are competition, we are analytical skills, we are evaluation skills, we are the real test life. Many tend to fail because this component of significant contribution is severely missing. In order for us to advocate their needs, we need to see them and we need to let them tread on the right path. A leader is not a person who travels on the same path for the very reason that everybody does. A leader finds a new way, paves the way, and leaves the trial if it is the right way for many others to follow. And Wonderful, Dr. Femida. Uh, no, no, I just want to add something that you already said so beautifully. A leader is someone who not only knows the way, he shows the way and goes the way. And I think, you know, Dr. Femida is the leader because she's actually treading on a path, you know. She's, she's, she's multitasking, she's a leader on the move, a person who's actually in a, in, in a hurry to change the world. I, God bless you and thank you so much. I, I, I'm amazed at, at, you know, I just hope someone who's driving is concentrating and not listening to you. I want someone to be safe, right? Because you're, you're very powerful words. This is this is so wonderful, and both of you, you know, amazing ladies out there, uh, Danesa, ma'am, and you, Dr. Femida, you changed the entire dynamics of letters. You spoke about something so well. You know, I recall a very nice incident. Uh, somebody told me, when you are down, three people or three kind of things that saves you: faith, friends, or fool. Oh, you know, I call it father-in-law because father-in-law is fool to believe in me. But it's the same thing. But you know, what I learned from all of you is 
be strong in your faith. Don't give up hope on. And then you surround your children with light prayers. I can see the mentors like you doing amazing work. I'll, I'll bring in, you know, in the end to all these August panelists to, you know, have one quick question if anyone has it. But let me quickly call the last speaker for the day, all the way again from Thailand. David was very patient and I love the t-shirts wearing. I told, he already makes me feel old. Please welcome David Perodin, the educator from Thailand. Yeah, David, I can see that. Thank you. Hello, my friends. Yeah, it was... Um... It was mentioned to me that I should promote my university, so uh, here I am. I am wearing a polo shirt with the logo of my university, and I'm proudly wearing the polo shirt. I would like to quickly share my screen, and I uh, just like just like most most Americans, I am very time time conscious, so I have my timer going. Uh, Dawood, you will not have to stop me, my friend. <laughs> That's wonderful, so, okay. sir. <laughs> One less work to do. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, I was asked to speak about contributing to personal and professional development of young people. Uh, fortunately for me, a couple of weeks ago, I was able to give a presentation about Generation X. And in doing so, I had to do some research to prepare for that presentation, and which that, that research coupled with a few interviews I did following that presentation uh, led me to today. Now, this is me. Uh, I've, I've, I've been in Southeast Asia for a very long time, very, very long time. And most of my, most of my research, uh, most of my social, uh, social capital, uh, social science and social studies based researches are done about education in Southeast Asia. And we know we know education in, in Southeast Asia tends to be a bit authoritative. And um, with teachers, teachers and educators who, who tend to be a very authoritative, uh, they tend to want students to learn the way that they learned. In which if we limit, if, if we limit a child to the way that we learn, we are doing a great disservice because they were born in another time. Can you imagine myself uh, trying to trying to educate a, a generation Zer in the way that I learned, you know, 30 or 40 years ago? See, what what I see, what what, what I see with generation Xers and even generation Yers is that uh, from this area, from this from the Southeast Asian area is that they are great test takers, wonderful test takers, but they have, they have very little real world skills. And we, we right now are teaching the Generation Z and they're different. They hate lectures. My goodness, they, they fall asleep if someone yammers and just talks for three hours. And I tell my students, look, I'm not here to, I'm not here to teach you. I'm here to help you find uh, knowledge and find information. I try, I try to be more of a, of a facilitator and a role model. I tell my students that they not only need knowledge, but they need soft skills and hard skills, and they need, they need a different disposition and a, the character that will make them successful in a global economy. And like, other speakers, other speakers who mentioned this earlier, they mentioned hard skills and soft skills. Well, my, my forte is language. I teach language. I teach everything about language and applied linguistics. But I also help my students with soft skills. Time management is so important. You respect my time, I will respect you. Teamwork, leadership, soft skills are very important. Because most, most countries are facing a lack of skilled workers and there are, there are very good jobs out there, but these young people are not ready to face these jobs unless, unless we help prepare them. And see, as the global employment setting changes, there are certain skills that are needed for career and life success. And the Generation Zers, they learn differently. They have to be prepared differently to 
lead the lead the new world. And I suggest, I strongly suggest project-based learning. I really do. I use project-based learning in most of most of my classrooms is like, like I said before, Generation Zers, they don't want to sit there for lectures and a teacher just talking, talking, talking all of the time. They want to do something. They want to apply knowledge that they gain on their own. I help facilitate, but my goodness, no teacher is any match for the internet to provide knowledge. And when a teacher says, I, I provide knowledge, Okay, you provide information. You provide some experience, but you mostly provide information. Students, students can get all the knowledge they want from the internet. Just ask Siri or Google. The project-based learning is so important in my opinion. It is, it is an instructional method. That's where we come in. We instruct students on how to, how to overcome, how to be triumphant with complex tasks. And the students, they have to ask questions and, and their problems come up. And just, just like the speaker said before me, the students, they need problem solving and decision making and investigative skills, and they need to be able to reflect. And if we help facilitate these things, if we help students feel comfortable about themselves, if we, if we create positive, uh, neutral to positive environments, and if we remove those negative environments from our classrooms, and we create, we, we create a, a sense of success and accomplishment within our students, they will transfer that feeling of success to the real world. See, that is where project-based learning comes in. So if we want to support the youth, we need to promote, we need to promote practices, we need to promote new learning habits, and we need to emphasize critical thinking skills because our students, they, they will discover a world that might not be what they think it is because my generation and the generation before me, we kind of messed up the earth, you know, and now generation Z, okay, I'm sorry what I just said, but it's true, okay? My generation and the generation be before me, we really made the earth uh, almost, uh, almost inhospitable, <laughs> you know? And Generation Z, they have to fix our problems. So we have to help them. We, we, have, we have to prepare them. And you know, the best teachers are those who show you where to look. And they don't tell you what to see. And I, I feel, I feel that is my job as an educator. I know that the world needs to be better. I know that people need to care about each other. And I know that in, instead of hating me because I'm a different skin color or hating me because I'm a different religion or hating me because I am not the gender or I'm not the, the whatever, why not, why not help our, our our young people come together, globally come together. And sometimes we have to be that, that role model and we have to lead the young people. So I, I am completely, completely flabbergasted at the speakers who's, who came before me. And I feel so inadequate bringing up the end of this presentation. And I hope I, hope I did well in your eyes. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you so much. I think all of you gave your best and all of you created so much better. I'm reading the feeds on Life FB and I'm seeing people sharing love, appreciation, because at the end of the day, it's educators who have made a big difference in their life. You know, the children that we're talking about, and I, let me indulge as a moderator, it's the only time, you know, you can take the reins and speak for a couple of minutes. I think all of you did raise upon this particular thing. There is no planet B, so we are not looking at plan B. This is the only planet we have to live in. We, you know, of course, some of us can go and attach zero gravity and come back, but you need to be Virgin Galactic and, and Virgin Blue Origins. Otherwise, all of us are here. So let's work to this SDG goals. Uh, David, you spoke about the, the PBL and, and so beautifully. I want to just share a couple of things, the two slides. 
children that I work with, education is incomplete without students. We did a PBL with the with the, the Euro Cup was going on and, and the Copa America was going on and students had to choose a country, look at the culture. It could be Italians, it could be English, the Spanish or the Argentinians. And then they realized that this is what we are talking about. A world where we are together, a flat world that we're together. And this is something I want to so proudly say that idea is to write down, I wrote this book called The Four Books Together Makes the Whole glo Globe. And, and I think I indulge enough of myself. Uh, all of you have contributed so much and shared so wonderful evening. It made my day. And I think what better than inviting the, the secretary and the honorary director, Dr. Dheeraj Mehrotra, the author, president awardee of CWSIR. Sir, you've been applauding, appreciating, patiently hearing, putting your comments. Please, sir, why don't you be, take the honor of giving a word of thanks to all our dignitaries out here. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Daud. Uh, it's really a great pleasure for me to be a party this evening. And uh, I'm really appreciative of all the wonderful speakers who came out with uh, noble issues. Let me tell you very frankly, you know, they came out with their heart and uh, the dynamic uh, deliberations really brought forward much to think over, ponder over of what best we can do with our children. Well, youth development, of course, emphasizes the importance of meeting the four human needs, which talks about belonging, the mastery, the independence and the generosity. Well, it's very clear out of listening to these wonderful speakers tonight, this evening, it's clear that the needs are going to be met in the positive ways, of course, with our uh, supervision, support, collaboration, creative potentials being paved further. And as a result, we need to look forward to delivering these opportunities to our kids against all odds of that of Corona, pandemic, and all that which is around us. For sure, we are looking forward to the guidance, the approach, and the social emotional thinking is what a priority today. So we are going to also nurture with the march of time, talk to them, give them a patient hearing, as well as talk about the SEL, the social emotional intelligence need to be given a preface at this very stroke. Managing the pressure, teaching them how to be prepared for the you know, uncertain culture, uncertain environment, the VUCA world of volatile uncertainty all around. And that is what is going to be probably the very responsibility of we, the educators, guiding them. Of course, they are well, well, versed about what's going on around and also to the very, very spectrum of not treating them as kids, but young adults and technology has made them beforehand. And that certainly comes out to the paging. So I'm really excited to deliver a vote of thanks first to Dr. Shruti Marwa, the general secretary our founder, uh, president, uh, Dr. Uh, Pandey, who has been taking this initiative, connecting all of us, our speakers for today. Uh, we started with Dr. Abdullah Rashid, the Honorable Minister of State Education from Maldives. Thank you so very much, sir. Then we had a wonderful speech on world as a family by Major Harsh Kumar, the secretary of the NCERT. And this gentleman really, really brought forward from heart. So thank you so very much, sir, for your wonderful deliberation. Then we had uh, Dr. Bridge Dandi, the former advisor, Ministry of Science and Technology. Thank you so very much, sir. You spoke from the heart and we could make out how the intelligent mind works. And then we had the wonderful speech by Dr. Shiv Prashad, who uh, the former director, Nehru San Center, Maharashtra. Sir, you really brought forward the wonderful story of my mentor. Of course, I've been you know, honored by this gentleman. I do remember his words, uh, Dr. Kalam, who talked about, and it goes to the youth of today, that having a small aim in life is the biggest crime in the world. And that is what I recall today of your speech about him. 
Then my friend, Dr. Priyadarshni Nayak, the founder of GTEF India and a wonderful academician, a great committed leader of the country. Thank you very much, sir, for your deliberation. And then we have speeches by two wonderful ladies. Uh, of course, um, not to forget Dr. Azaz Qureshi, the president for Dream TV. You talked about ethics and the connect with the youth today. The speech by the wonderful lady Donza Arbas, the co-founder for Nexados from Philippines. You really talked great sense, let me tell you. From the heart, you spoke about the youth, the empathy you mentioned, and it is a reality. It is a reality, and we need to touch upon that. And the speech by Dr. Fatima um, Fomita, I'm sorry, Mohammed, uh, the entrepreneur from Sri Lanka. Well, I've been uh, visiting Sri Lanka quite often with the Ministry of Education at the Ratnapura province. So thank you very much. You recalled of that interest and the deliberation and the, 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 the approach, you know, I could see that the challenge you received out of, you know, deliberating so well in no light and that too in the, in the traffic, my goodness, kudos to you and uh, God bless you for this. But next time when you, uh, we want you to be in a proper place to listen to you the best. Of course, you deliberated uh, one of the best sessions today. Thank you so very much. Also, finally, my friend from Thailand, uh, David, you did it great. Not only your t-shirt is looking smart, you are also with your deliberation. So once again, I can plug on that logo of yours. Congratulations. And thank you so very much. Least, not the least, for sure, uh, the wonderful host for the day, the moderator. Thank you so very much, Daud Bhai. God bless you. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you so much, Dr. Dheeraj. And I, I can see the way you summarize the entire thing. So beautiful. So many takeaways. I think I, I just wrote down any panelist would like to recommend any book. I think this is so wonderful. Any one book that you want to recommend, I'll open the floor for any panelist to please go ahead and suggest. I'm sure uh, Dr. Shiva would have a list of all science books. So, you know, I'll exclude him. Right. But so why don't I begin with you? Uh, any book that you like to recommend as, as an educator? And we'll take a minute more and then we end our session there. Tamisa, ma'am, Aja, sir, uh, Brit, sir. All right, I'm beginning. Yeah, Shiva, sir, please go ahead. Okay, man. I think I already told there uh, uh, Brilliant Blunders. It's a book by Mario Livio. Um, for those people who are afraid, to, uh, afraid of failure, please uh, read that and you'll find that five of the topmost scientists of the world. Um, their uh, mistakes have been highlighted there. So next time when you, after reading that, you'll not be afraid of failures or making mistakes. That's great. Wonderful, sir. I think we will take that as, as, as the right end to it. Make mistakes, but make new ones. Don't be afraid. Fly high, as, as Samuel Brackett said, so where faith is all about jumping from the cliff with two options. Either you know that there'll be land or you get wings to fly. So let's keep flying from everybody out here. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening and a great future for our children and lives if you are the educators. Once again, I'm your host, Daud Wade, signing off. And from everybody here as Charles Water Society of Innovation, thank you so much. Good night. Bye-bye, everybody. God bless. Thank you, everyone. Bye.